All right, 5.30 having arrived, call the meeting to order. Stand to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, first up, Mr. Kimball. I still think Paul is the new guy. I'm still thinking of Paul as the new guy at, at the town highway department. And I'm here to uh, thank you for 10 years of service to the highway department. And there is a little, little something for you there. And thank you very much, Paul, for all of us and the rest of the members of the town, because we know that it's not easy. At all. You all <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. You hit it right on the head, Andy. I was thinking the same thing. Didn't we just hire Seems like a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Keep saying that to people and realize it's been like 17 years. <coughs> oh, you can stay, Paul. Yeah, you can stay. That check right down to Yanni's. All right, she's not on the um, agenda, but I'd like to allow Kate Hartnett from the Conservation Commission to uh, talk to us, if that's okay with everybody. And the planning board, too. Okay. And the planning board. <laughs> to the microphone, if you would, please. Oh. Hey. Hopefully you adjusted your hair on the back of your head, because that's all that shows on the television camera when you see <laughs> Put on your helmet, Kate. <laughs> I need to get advice. She says I should have done it. Great. Okay. It's been a long day. I probably feel pretty flat. Um, okay, my name is Kate Hartnett, and I'm here with two hats on, which is my hair is flat. Uh, one is Conservation Commission, one is Planning Board. And um, I'm just here to try to figure out a plan between now and April 12th. And the topic is Northern Pass. And there's a big fat deadline on the 12th of April for something called supplemental pre-filed. And you guys did submit comments last fall. I think Andy put them in. Uh, well, the, the board discussed and approved right. them, but yeah, no. And you guys did that, and then Andy was called to testify uh, February? Yeah, I think or it was January. February. January, both, I think, yeah. yeah. We both testified. So that was based on the previous round the stuff that went in in the end of the year 2016. We've had about 25 technical sessions between January and March. This is very different this time. Last time you guys basically provided your testimony based on what you knew about Deerfield as leaders of the community, based on your knowledge, based on your information. And the series of questions follows the regs that the Site Evaluation Committee has established. And that's all reflected in Andy's testimony. This time, the um, homework from our town attorney, Stephen Whitley, to me and Andy was 12 questions that mean we have to do homework and look at documents, documents from all of the, te all of the technical sessions, not just put in by Northern Pass, uh, experts, but also by the Council for the Public, other interveners, and have an informed opinion. And the topics are a wide range of things, all laid out in the um, SEC regs, and they, let me see if I can find my paper on this. They're based on, straight out of the RSA's 162H16 findings, and also the SEC rules, which are also in there, and they're parts 100 through 300 of the SEC rules. I'm not an attorney. I'm learning as I go along. But the reason I'm here is that I think we have a relatively short window between now and April 12th to get the homework done. And I believe that John uh, made a copy of the email, but also a kind of handy multicolored 
uh, summary of that, which I put together. And you don't have to get involved in the details, but what that little summary shows is those 12 questions from the attorney, and I'm trying to figure out who's going to do what so we get our homework done. So any stuff in green the Conservation Commission's doing, any stuff in blue the Planning Board is doing, any stuff in yellow we've already done. The problem is there's a lot of white, and I'm not sure who will take the lead on making the answers. Am I making sense so far? Okay. So one other thing is that the Planning Board had a conversation about this last Wednesday, and we agreed to have a separate meeting on April 12th to talk about this stuff, uh, the Planning Board. So why it would be very helpful between now and then to get direction from the Select Board on what you guys want Andy to do, what you think the Planning Board should do. I think personally there are some things that should be done jointly, um, but I'm not sure how to proceed. And then the other thing, which perhaps is most important, is that according to our attorney's direction, well, first of all, it basically says we got to have, to have any credibility, we have to look at the stuff, those volumes of information. And secondly, that Andy and I basically need to be authorized to submit this testimony, and it would have the most teeth if you guys review it and also approve of it before it goes in. So the problem is it's a really short window. So I'm just here kind of to say I have been, don't ask me why, to most of the technical sessions in the fall and the spring. I'm somewhat familiar with some of the information. Nobody can know it all. But we have, I think, a fair amount of work to do between now and April 12th when that stuff is due. So I don't know what to do, but I want to make sure we make the best use of our legal budget. So I'm here to get your wisdom. Good. Um, well, I'm certainly happy to continue um, in the process that I started in, although uh, certainly if, if Fred, if you have more of an interest in me, feel free to kick me to the curb. I won't be uh, I'm not doing any kicking. <laughs> <laughs> um, put out, and I, I've looked at the 12 questions. I think the first thing that's most important is what Kate has just mentioned that we don't actually need any technical information on, but that is for this board to authorize one of us or some of us to provide the testimony. Um, and I think rather than, I know in some cases they've asked for specific dates that you're authorized to provide the testimony. I think we should be fairly uh, broad based here and uh, come up with a range like you're authorized to present testimony from April 1st to November 1st or whatever we want to do or do it in 30 day increments. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's important that we be able to acknowledge that we have the services <coughs> aboard and that we are authorizing someone to move forward with testimony, as I'm assuming the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board are doing as well. So could I get a motion for that? Yeah, I would make a motion that we authorize a member of the Board of Selectmen to uh, present pre-filed testimony um, any time from April 1st to July 1st. And that that member be you? Sure, I'm happy to have that at least. And if we need to change it, we can. Three months. Did I get a second? I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So what, what's the next step that we need to, we well, need to take? Well, we'll acknowledge uh, to the town council that we've, we've made this motion um, time frame. And I think um, I need to go through Kate's matrix and go through these, probably get together with Kate, and then come back to the board uh, with, you know, pretty quickly with a preliminary outline of um, at least what I see as responses from the Board of Selectmen. Um, get your input as to what you see as the responses and then consolidate and mm -hmm. edit and get yeah. off to town council. I think that'd be uh, very nice of you to do so. And I could certainly arrange to meet with Kate. Okay. Um, may I speak? There. So, absolutely. One of the things that strikes me as a possibility, I don't know if you guys would be willing, is to have Andy come to the meeting on April 5th with the planning board because 
some of that stuff I think might be joint planning board select board stuff and you know whatever material I'm going to bring to go through then he could have the benefit of which I think might save him some time and also I hope by the end of the planning board meeting if you're there we could figure out what color you guys want to be and who gets what color assigned. Red. <laughs> well, you've got to work that out yourself. I have no opinion on that part. I'm just trying to keep track of the moving parts. Yeah, I can certainly attend the meeting on April 5th. Um, uh, the other thing I would mention is I think there's, you know, I don't, uh, haven't committed to memory what the Planning Board and the Conserv Conservation Commission provided as testimony. I've certainly got copies of it. Um, the Board of Selectmen may differ a little bit in opinion on some of those mm -hmm. things. I know with regard to economic impact, for example, this board was pretty straightforward about not seeing any particular damage to the local business community um, from the project. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's the opinion of the others, but there, there may be some standout points where the Board of well, Selectmen- Unless there's evidence that we're not aware of, yeah. I, I think that's pretty much our, our position. Um, to that point, last time, as I mentioned, you guys did it pretty much based on your knowledge and expertise. Um, as I read, oh, that's attorney. It's a scary thing. Well, right. <coughs> it seemed to work, but um, <coughs> as I read this memo, I think it's quite important this time to have the opinions much more specifically based on the record submitted by Northern Pass, Council for the Public. Um, other interveners and other experts. And for instance, for economic issues, there's at least five reports floating around. Four say one thing, one says another. For visual impact, same thing. There's five reports floating around, one says one thing, four say the other. And so what we're faced with is a need to be aware of this stuff and be able to have enough of an opinion to review it and think, yeah, I'm with number one or I'm with, num with the four. Because there's very different, you know what I'm saying? Is that um, different opinions from different experts come out to different places. And you guys, again, that, not my words, but what the attorney says is we pretty much need to review that stuff and have an opinion based on the record that's been submitted. And that's, that's what the big sea change is from last time is that Again, this was based on your experience. This time it's got to be based on all those documents that came in. We don't, I shouldn't say it has to be. We don't have to do that, but we'll have a lot less credibility if we don't look at the record. Go ahead. I, th I think the other thing we need to do is there's a, a number of people who are claiming that they have reached out to this board, have reached out to other boards, um, you know, looking for our input um, and, and what could go along with this report. And I think we need to uh, verify who has actually reached out to us and who we haven't talked with, period, or been contacted by. And I, I think that's fairly straightforward, but I think that would be a big part of this, too. That okay. That's a great point, Andy, because you're exactly right on that one. Well, so anything else? That that's we all can I do? got. I appreciate the time you're putting in. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> and uh, thanks for bringing this to our attention. Thanks very much. And uh, I guess I'm all done. Rest up. No such it's, thing. It's coming. No such thing. But thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, outstanding minutes for the 10th of March. Motion to approve. Second. Motion seconded. Any discussion? Yep. Mr. Jeff Shute. Um, on page two under unfinished business, um, the first sentence that it says the first steps in selecting the next fire chief and building supervisor for 2018 by forming a committee. We're talking about a committee just for the fire chief, not yes. for. I may want to change it to, you know, forming a committee for fire chief. As opposed to just random committees. Yeah. Anyone else? Nope. Good notice. I better. I, I decided I better show up tonight because I didn't want to be assigned to any more committees. <laughs> 
All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Very well. All right, I'm an accounts payable manifest in the amount of $542,884.39, of which $500,000 is for the school. So moved. Second. <coughs> Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Payroll grossing at fifty-seven thousand seven hundred forty-seven dollars and seventy-three cents, netting at forty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-nine dollars and fifty-eight cents. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, so the rescue squad had to call Physio Control Tech out for their Life Pack 12 last week. An $873,000 part, $311 part, labor of $1,395 for a total of $2,579. Uh, the work order was performed, completed, but was also covered under our current maintenance agreement. Uh, the board uh, is being asked by the rescue squad to the permission to order a life pack 15. For the next month or so, Physio Control has a promotional offer. We could get a huge discount if we were to purchase the life pack by June. List price for this monitor with all the accessories would be approximately $38,630, and our price with promotional discount and life pack 12 trade in would be $25,784.60. They would like to use approximately $15,784.60 from the Rescue Capital Reserve and approximately $10,000 of Rescue Association funds. Cindy, could you go to the microphone and tell us, give us a, a, an overview of what a life pack is? Uh, the, the Life Pack 15 has been on our radar for a couple years because we we're going to lose the maintenance agreement on the 12th. It's the uh, heart monitor, uh, defib, uh, blood pressure, O2 stats. It also has capability of sending um, the heart strip to the hospital before the patient even gets there. So it's upgrading what we, it was in our plan to upgrade it. It's just that now they've let me know that there's a promotional offer going, um, and they'll give us a $6,500 trade-in for our Life Pack 12. Is that after we just spent $2,500 to up? We didn't spend that money. We didn't. That was because it was covered from the maintenance agreement that we have. Okay. We pay $1,000 a year for the maintenance agreement, Good. and they come out once a year. They go through the machine, make sure everything's working. But because we have that agreement, uh, that was all covered. I just would have been twenty six hundred bucks. It would have been, and that's I, that was. I just wrote that to explain. There's also, I think it's a fifty six hundred dollar um, maintenance agreement plan for the fifteen, but it it breaks it up into four years. It's a four year plan. So I was just trying to show you how important it was to have the maintenance agreement. So we'll need to get that if we get the fifteen the first year. Right. We wouldn't need it for the first year. In 2018, it would start. We could do our payment of 1400 It only ups my maintenance line like $200 of what we're paying we're, now. Because we're probably paying. We're paying on 1100 for the 12. Okay. Right. With a new machine, you said we'd get a year before we needed it. Right. We wouldn't need that agreement this year. Mm-hmm. Nice. The one year, one year initial warranty on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Sounds like a good idea to me. Sounds like one to me too. Mm -hmm. Could I get a motion? So moved. 
Second. Moved and seconded to uh, expend $15,784.60 from the Rescue Capital Reserve, and the Rescue Squad would use 10000 of its own funds. Can you afford that, Cindy? Okay. You we appreciate that. To. You can't afford not to. We need the machine. We need the machine. We have to do it. <coughs> all right. All those that are in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks for bringing that to our attention, Cindy. Thank you. All right. I have a timber tax levy in the amount of $1,292.98. For John Thibodeau, Boulder Drive, Milford, New Hampshire. I would make a motion that we collect the timber tax levy from Mr. Billadu or Thibodeau. Second. Moved in second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Petition and poll license petition from PSNH for one poll on Silly Road in the town of Deerfield. Where is Silly Road? Down by the Raymond border. Oh, okay. Where that would be what? By, down by the Raymond Deerfield border, runs up over by the old veterinary clinic. Oh. And motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? When the swamp goes down, you can ride all the way into the back side of uh, Pawtuckaway Park. Requires a dry year, though. <laughs> I have a request from the Heritage Commission to appoint Karen Levitt, uh, <coughs> me, a member of the Heritage Commission with a term expiring April 30th, to 2020. I make a motion that we appoint Karen. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, because Mrs. Katie is not going to be able to accept her trustee position, we contacted John Reagan and he is willing to do so. So I'd like a motion to appoint Mr. John Reagan a trustee of trust funds for three years, expiring 2020 in March. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say Chair? aye. Yeah, is, is, I apologize. Okay, is that a is that a three year or is it would it just be a Reject. one year? It's three year. I thought it would be one year yeah. also. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, Harriet. Request for a computer adjustment to abate the amount of six hundred thirty-five dollars and ninety-seven cents for the two thirteen two fourteen tax lien on Map four twenty-three lot twenty located at South Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. That would be Amanda Zikmanis. Almost done. That's the last one. Last one. I'll make motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah, we got it. Throw it around.
correspondence. How about a, a town administrator's report? A couple of items. Uh, <clears throat> Rick Pelletier uh, had notified me last week that a, the phase converter associated with the cardboard compactor had failed. Uh, he took it for possible reassembly and fixing. They found out that the internal components had gotten beyond repair, so we've had to order a new one. Rick did some research. That converter was installed by him back in the 80s, so it's over 21 years old. Uh, I think uh, it's seen uh, its time there. Uh, the station is still functional. They've used it. They're using the backup cardboard compactor that they usually use during the heavy seasonal time. Uh, approximate cost is going to be about $3,500. I believe it's in, he told me, he's going to be looking to put that in tomorrow. Uh, so that should be done, about four to six hours in maintenance and uh, installation. He can do it, John? Yep. Uh, we've ordered a new compactor based on the vote uh, on the 21st. It'll take approximately six to eight weeks for delivery. And the price on that was $21,365. That'll be delivered, painted, installed with a hopper. Is that the big compactor? Uh, that's the one that is, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I can find that out. Uh, he uh, will need the need electric hookup, and Rick will handle that. And that is going with a three-phase compactor as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's time for town RFPs again. I've met with uh, Mark Young uh, for paving, road construction, winter sand, and road mowing. Uh, the RFPs will be placed in the Union Leader Sunday News and be posted in George B. White Library, Post Office, and on the town website. Uh, new this year, I've asked the IT department to build a, its own web page so that any vendors looking to do business with the town, it will be very clear. Uh, the website will have its own RFP landing page, which okay. will be on the left-hand side, which will bring any vendor looking to do business right to any RFP. It will be broken up by department and then within that year. And each of the RFPs will be labeled with their own title. And they'll be listed on there by year, so you'll be able to have a history of any RFP coming out. Good. And that was up and running as of today. Steve Jamelli was able to build it, and we have the RFPs posted already. Excellent. So we're not going to be mailing them directly to bidders anymore? Correct. Any business with the town, vendors will have to check the website or one of the physical postings in any of the government buildings. Or the newspaper. And the newspaper, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's fine. If we don't get any, then we can... Yeah. We can <laughs> repost them. <laughs> yes. Yep. And that's it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? For the town administrator, go ahead. Oh, not for the town administrator. Okay. Oh. All right, then uh, unfinished other or new? Yes. Uh, Pleasant Lake, we had asked for them to come in on the 17th, and I mm -hmm. checked with them, and they were fine with the 17th, and I told them 530 right after we get uh, the initial, initial uh, flag, um, flag pledge and, mm -hmm. and proceed from there. That's fine. I, I assume they'll be uh, they'll be using a slide projector, so they'll be a right up against right that wall. Would probably work fine. All right. Thank God we don't have any artwork there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyone else with other new business? Yes, sir. I, I would just mention that uh, I got uh, the town administrator's uh, tips and hints on steering committees, and I thought that that was very useful and is going to focus us a little bit as we get off to a yeah we could really get off on a tangent otherwise so our next meeting is uh april 3rd that's Should correct skip the 10th go to the 17th and skip the 10th go to the 17th correct that is what is on the schedule okay you can always hold a meeting if you so oh, choose yeah because <laughs> that's that's what we live to do all right um so no other business whatsoever. We do not have any reason to go into non-public. So citizens' comments. Ms. Katie. Should 
should probably we have a portable microphone, don't we? We do somewhere. We, we have get a, mic, that out. a wireless mic somewhere. But. I have three things I'd like to bring up. One is I have heard over the months of the testimony that has been given at the Northern Pass hearings, but I have never seen the selectmen discussing what they would put forth or even that there had been a draft done. So I wondered where that is. Uh, certainly, I am interested in knowing what you were putting forth as the community's <coughs> feelings and what would happen within the community. So I think that's something that you should be discussing in public, and especially tonight after hearing Kate say that you're going to be coming up with answers to 12 questions through three committees, that that discussion should be in public. Uh, second thing is that as a person who has to use the town's website for posting public meetings, I feel it's a very convoluted problem when any committee should be able to go to the website and just post a meeting. That's how it's done in most towns. Instead, I've got to send an email to Steve and wonder if it got on until he sends me back an email, which he usually does, or when I look at the site. So why isn't our website user-friendly to the committees that have to use it and allow them to post their meetings. I mean, it's expensive to have Steve have to do some little job like that when he could be using the IT talent for something that is more important to the town's business. And then I would like a copy of the 12 questions emailed to me that have been put forth to the selectmen and the draft of who would be answering what questions and what is coming from the committees. Uh, certainly, I have been able to go to the SEC site and see um, various things, but I think that I live in the community. I should know what my community is saying from the elected official's position representing all the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd just like to thank Cindy for all she does with the rescue squad. That's a major task. And and second really that Appreciate one. it. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Have supper. <laughs>